Women just go off attraction and that chemistry. And then in a few months time, they realize that they don't respect this man because of what he's built. How hard has he worked? Is he sitting around playing video games all day? They're not looking at his resources, which is how we're biologically wired. You're however many years older than me. You've had this many more years on the planet and this is what you've built. I can't mm. respect you. So I think another key element as a woman is ensuring that you're with a man that you can respect mm. because it's very difficult to hold your tongue, not get moody and be peaceful when you look at him and you're like, is this is all you got? The greatest honor that you could give a man is I will choose your DNA and carry your baby for nine months. Feminism, what's your opinion? Relationship. Oh, Christ, However, I'll be crying. <laughs> men were just smiling at me as soon as they saw me. And I'm not talking about the validation. I'm talking about best way for me to have the clear skin, have a healthy body. The nice hair was through one female role model because I don't think there's many out there that I have mm. is <laughs> no I like that mindset you've completely shifted yeah. what I just thought I like that hi Mia how are you hi yeah I'm great thank you how are you today I'm really good thank you I discovered good. you on TikTok literally about a couple weeks ago Mm -hmm. and there's this one video that I mean it came up on my for you page and it was actually we'll talk about it later on but that video I really needed because I was feeling really nervous about some sort of stuff in my life and that video that you put out really reassured me and when I watched your video I was like I love this girl's energy I love her mindset this is amazing so I checked out your page and straight away I was just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling all the way to the bottom and I absolutely oh love everything that you post about so I should, personally before we start I wanted to say thank you no thank you that makes me feel good because when you start off you don't know if you're doing the right thing or people are going to like what you have to say so for one person to say that to me I'm honored thank you I mean you <laughs> millions of comments of people saying that your content's amazing yeah you know what people have started reaching out saying that to me so I feel like it's a nudge that I'm doing the right thing of when it happens of course you are of course I mean your work's all about you know inner work self-esteem dating and it's predominantly for women right yeah yeah and I've noticed yeah. it's more 18 to 24 year olds that are liking my content as well yeah I'm pretty much on the same journey as well like I'm all about you know fixing healing sort of things that I've been through or working on my self-esteem working on you know all of that sort of stuff so I feel like when you start that journey there's something that might have triggered it something you might have been through so for you personally what was that sort of trigger of you know I want to start working on myself and you know building inner work and self-esteem and that sort of stuff yeah, so when I was 22 and I finished university, I just kind of realized that I had such low self-esteem. I wasn't, I was in bad shape. I had awful habits and I felt really, really low. And I was like, something's got to change. And I knew that my childhood had affected me because I came from a single parent household. Um, my mother turned to alcohol, but I've forgiven. And I think that's a massive part of the journey. You've got to forgive what happened in your childhood. So I didn't know what to do, but I was actually going to make a TikTok about this. I knew I just needed to escape and I became an au pair. So I moved to the north of Spain with a Spanish family where I didn't know anyone. I didn't know the language. I was on my own, isolated. And I was going to say to some young girls, make, being an au pair is such a great way to reflect, do some inner work, even the life experiences that it gives you. So I moved to Spain on my own and I started some intense inner work because I was in a completely new environment. I started meditating. I started getting into the gym. I went to language school. I started journaling, reading about self-improvement. And that's when I feel like I really, really started to change my identity, really. Oh my God, that's I didn't know you were an au pair. That's so cool. Yeah, so, <clears throat> so I became, I learned Spanish. I'm not fluent. Um, but I just feel like that was the best thing that I did for myself. I look back and I'm like, I really started my life at 22, breaking those old habits and becoming the woman that I envision myself to be. Mm. I think change is more difficult when you don't change your environment. And that's why I would say to young girls, if you're stuck, you don't know what to do, being an au pair and if you get on well with the family like I did because I was with them for two years we're so close now I am I am forever grateful for them hosting me because they don't even realize how much it changed my life oh that's beautiful yeah oh my god what made you like think to do that like was there a website <clears throat> or I don't know like an advertisement that you saw 
I actually had an au pair when I was younger, so I always knew about it from Czech Republic. Um, oh, wow. And then I'd always wanted to speak fluent Spanish. And there's so many websites out there. And in Spain, especially, au pairs, they're, um, it's really common for families to have au pairs. So. Oh, my God, that's amazing. That's so yeah. cool. Oh, my God. I mean, you also were a secondary school teacher, weren't you? Yeah, I was a secondary history, secondary school teacher. And you sort of, you've quit that now? Yeah. So whilst I was an au pair, my mum encouraged me to become a teacher because she's actually a teacher. And she was, don't get me wrong, she was doing it from a place of love of and course. she wanted the best for me. And I'm so grateful. But after two years, whilst, I'm whilst I was back in the UK where I trained to become a teacher, still doing my inner work because I think it's a never ending journey, I realised that I was living her life and not mine. And I was like, who do I want to be? And that's when I started reflecting, like, if I was a teacher forever, I would have regrets. And it's annoying because I'm good at it. <laughs> the kids <laughs> love me. I got on. I can I was tell. A good teacher. Yeah, no, I can tell. Um, but I just knew that I had to figure out who I wanted to be because otherwise I'd have regrets. And that's mm. a massive part of my why with everything. I don't want to be have regrets. Oh, my God, that's amazing. I mean, so mm. is that how you develop that sort of high class mindset? Because there was a video that you put up on TikTok, I think it was like a two-part one, and you put up sort of six different things that sort of constitutes a high-value, high-class mindset for anybody. And I kind of want to talk and delve into each one of those. So the yeah. first one is obviously, I mean, I'll quickly list them out. So you've got victim mindset, you've got emotional control, fitness and nutrition, um, and then sort of relationships and dating. So, you know, being able to intelligently choose who you you know keep around you and sort of know when to walk away that sort of stuff being disciplined and then you know education so whether that's you know building healthy habits you know reading books that sort of stuff so if we want to start with victim mindset because I have dealt with this quite a lot I'm not gonna lie like taking accountability that sort of stuff I think on your journey when you realize something needs to change victim mindset is the first stage that you're in because I had that in my early 20s I was angry with my dad angry with my mum it's your fault it's your fault I'm like this it's your fault I'm insecure and I actually think before you invest in coaching I think counseling and looking back is the right way because I had counseling for an extensive period of time and I had to forgive my parents and I had to realize I'm an adult now. How I behave is my responsibility. Nobody else is. So I think that victim mindset is where you're blaming everybody else for your issues. And it's valid. Things that happened in your childhood were <clears throat> unfortunate that they happened to you. And it wasn't your fault. But um, a quote that really helped me understand this, and I'm sorry, it's got a swear word in it. Is that oh, okay? Sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah um, <laughs> the quote that really helped me get over it with your parents is, that was their shit, not mine. Mm. You don't have to personalize it. And I think once you realize another quote is your parents were just doing the best with the consciousness they had at the time. Yeah. So I think the first thing is getting out of that victim mindset where you have to take accountability. Like you said, you're an adult now. It's your life. You've got to forgive and move on. And I think forgiving is really the biggest part because yeah. if you don't do that, you're just stuck. 100%. You know, I've actually talked about that in previous episodes about the forgiving part as well, because yeah. a lot of the time, you know, I'm so proud of my journey and how much I've grown and all that sort of stuff. But I get very angry at who I was a year or two ago. Why mm -hmm. would you put up with that? What's wrong with you? What, like a lot of anger. But then I've realized, why am I holding that hatred in my heart? Mm -hmm. And if, you know, I, I wouldn't speak to five-year-old me like that. So why would I speak to yeah. somebody who I was last year like that? Do you know what I mean? She needs love. Mm -hmm. And I also saw another quote. I forgot what it's along the lines of, but it's basically about, you know, stop being angry with your younger self. Like she needs love too. Like you yeah. should be proud of the journey that you've come on. And, you know, you're, you're going to hold that sort of negative energy. It's going to lower your frequency and everything. No, definitely. I've looked into that as well because base, essentially it's shame. It's yeah. the feeling of shame and I think that's one thing people really battle with on their level up journey because I had the exact same thing I was shameful of the person that I was and how I wasn't like the woman I am now but I was looking into it and actually you've got to incorporate those two it's your shadow essentially yeah. you've got to incorporate those two personalities because otherwise exactly like you said it's negative energy that gets mm. blocked up 100 percent 100 percent and I, I also had 
a huge victim mindset thing as well. Oh my God, the world's against me. Why is it always me? Mm. Like I'm such a good person. Why does this always happen to me? That sort of stuff all the time. And that's going to get you nowhere. It's genuinely yeah. going to get you new. So what I've learned when something sort of bad happens or whatever, I, I don't know if you know this, but I'm basically like a very emotional person, meaning that I feel everything quite deeply. I, d- yeah. I don't overthink too much. Like I'm quite a chill person, but when I have any emotions, like happiness, I'm ecstatic, sad, I feel really low. So what I've learned is just go and, you know, sort with, like if you need to cry, go upstairs to your room and cry, journal about it and then move on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're not, yeah. you're not suppressing the emotions, but yeah. then you're not sort of letting them control you. You're going to go 100%. deal with them, journal it out, write down any everything you think, go and wash your face and then carry on with your day. That's what I've learned. Definitely. You've got to feel it all. 100%. And you're allowed to feel it all. 100%. Second one's emotional control. So speaking of yeah. emotions. So what yeah. Because that's the one thing I think out of the six, I was like, I need to work on that. So I'm going to ask me. Yeah. yeah. So I kind of grew up in a chaotic environment where there wasn't much emotional control. So I had issues with this in my relationships, my intimate relationships, they came to show. And essentially, I just realized that you are not respected as a woman if you do not have emotional control Mm -hmm. and it will ruin your relationships if you do not have emotional control. So um, what I did to help me is on my reading journey, reading books like 48 Laws of Power and things like that, I started to understand how if you say less, you're respected because I would talk, 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 get angry, get emotional. And I realized that that wasn't respecting myself and people weren't respecting me. Mm. And what I did is actually in social situations, in the less intense social situations, I started to practice emotional control. So I would talk less. I would have self-awareness when I feel myself getting triggered. And also in the early stages of dating, when it's less intense, I would notice myself getting triggered and never act on it and continue being the woman that I wanted to be with emotional control, keeping my mouth shut, walking away so that when when the more intense situations come, I um, I don't react. I also think having a friend that you speak mm-hmm. to, that one girlfriend where you feel yourself getting tense about a situation, if you let it out with her, that's really helped me as well. You mentioned trigger, like being triggered. I've learned that if you are triggered about something, it shows either an insecurity or a place that you need to heal from. So why are mm-hmm. you getting so triggered about that? Like you need to it- sort of delve in and figure that out. So for example, with me, I uploaded a TikTok video about a couple of weeks ago that sort of went viral and a lot of comments that the majority were lovely comments. The majority, a lot of them were constructive criticism, which I love as well. Like I don't take things personally. So mm-hmm. I was like, you know, I, I want to grow, I want to improve that sort of stuff. And then some comments were solely about my appearance. Those ones didn't bother me so much. But when I was 16, I sort of worked on, you know, loving my out exterior. You know, I'd speak nicely to myself. I love myself, that sort of stuff. So I was like, that doesn't affect me. You know, some people are going to find me pretty. Some people are going to find me ugly. That It is what it is. Like, I know myself. But then there were some comments which were sort of just saying things like, oh, my God, you're so desperate for views. And then sort of talking to each other in the comments saying, oh, my God, yeah, she's just she's chasing that coin. She's so the ones that were sort of attacking my character and personality those ones triggered me so I sat back and I was like why am I getting upset about that like I remember I got this feeling in my stomach when I read those comments and I sat back and I was like it's because I care what people think about me so that so I need to work on that Mm. Yeah, so yeah, I was just yeah. like, you need to just remember, you know yourself, your family and friends know yourself. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks about your character. So always, whenever think- you get triggered or upset about something, just figure out if it's like a place you need to heal from. No, and that's, it's a really good sign that you're on the right path because you're able to self-reflect and take self-responsibility for your mm-hmm. triggers and realise why you have them and what you need to work on. Whereas I think people in the victim mindset it's everybody else's fault. Yeah. They don't analyze their triggers, etc. Mm. A point further of talking about triggers, and I think this was leading on to the other points I made about the high value mindset. I think why routine and discipline is so important moving on to the other points is because you are so much more triggered when you are not in control of what you eat, working out, looking after yourself, getting your sleep. That self-care is fundamental to how you value yourself Mm. if you're eating rubbish not looking after your health not doing anything that you know is the right thing for you on a fundamental level you aren't showing yourself that self-love and self-respect for you as a human so I think when you are insecure I realize 
I was getting so insecure about other women like with my um my ex-partner and I realized it's because I wasn't showing up every day making myself into the best woman I could be through my self-care and once every day I built those solid habits looking after myself those insecurities vanished and I don't oh, get I insecure that. about other women yeah I think I that's love that really important and I need to speak about it a bit more on my TikTok to be honest. Oh my god definitely yeah basically what you said about how you know being in control don't sort of engaging in negative behavior I didn't actually respond to any of the negativity at all I was yeah. like just leave it because it's going to lower my frequency and make me you know I, I read a quote or I think it was do you know who the wizard Liz is? Yes oh, you love yeah, yeah. Oh, she's amazing so she said something like never respond to a negative comment because what happens is you gain their negative energy and then they take away your positive energy so then you start mm -hmm. then you realize and I've th thought about it and I was like times in the past where I have sort of engaged in negative energy instead of just walking away I have felt low the rest of the day and yeah, I have had yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. of energy so yeah that's so important but yeah with discipline and routine this was one of the things that I admired so much about you like on your TikTok you used to wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning to go to yeah. the gym before your nine to five. The video mm -hmm. that sort of came up in my For You page, it was basically about the girls who are starting your nine to five, like see it as whether it's your long term thing, short term thing, whatever, rather than getting low about it and realizing you don't have enough time or whatever it is, you have the same schedule every single day. So make that like, take it to your advantage. And you used to say you used to wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning to go to the gym. And there was also a TikTok video where you said, because you took those steps to wake up at 4 a.m. and go to the gym or whatever, now you have grown into like the most confident version of yourself because you put that time in back then and it's all paid mm -hmm. off now. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's the thing about exactly like I said in that video, People can get down about the fact that they're in their ni this nine to five and it's not where they want to be. But looking back on my journey, advice for the younger girls, like when I look back, that was the best time for me to build those solid habits and routines because you eat at the same time every day. You have breaks and lunches at the same time every day for you to eat. So I really use my nine to five to build those solid routines. I think, don't get me wrong, it is monotonous and people forget that discipline is monotonous and it can be boring however um if you use it to your advantage you can go so far even just thinking who do I want to be in three months time knowing I'm in this nine to five doing these same habits every single day compounding them over time it's a really good position to be in how did you build that discipline yeah so people ask me this a lot and I've started training some girls from TikTok and I think your why has to be really strong so for me personally when I realized I was insecure to other women I was like, I need to get my body in the best shape to help me with my levels mm. of security. So I think for me, a massive why was I wanted to look good, whether that's vanity or to some people. However, I do think as a woman, if you want to be a certain kind of woman, that is important looking after your body, showing how you care for your body. So for me, once I saw the effects of having my body in the best shape, it gave me so much confidence. Nothing could make me stop going to the gym. That's it. So and your, your why is insane. Your Thanks. figure is amazing. It's oh, so amazing. thank you. Your why has to be so strong. So you want to feel confident. And also for me, like I said, a big why is I don't want any regrets. Because mm. already when you're getting, already at the age of 27, I'm starting to look back on things like, oh, I could have done that differently. So I can imagine when you get to those elderly years, the weight of regrets could be so strong. And I just, I don't want that. I don't. Have you seen that quote where it's like, if you're too worried about the price of winning, then wait until you get the bill from regret? Yes, yes. And I actually saw this from, I always say his name wrong and the kids used to laugh at me. Jeff Bezos, did I say it right? Yeah, Jeff Bezos, yeah. Yeah, yeah Bezos, yeah. Um, <laughs> he always talks about regret with, um, like, mm. with why he's done what he has done. I've seen him on panels and he's talked about, I do not want to be 80 and have regrets and that mm. really stuck with me because exactly like the quote you said yeah yeah and even with the whole looking good thing I have found such a difference when you sort of take time into your appearance in the morning isn't it such a yeah. big difference because yeah. the whole when you look good you feel good when you feel good you do good that's such a big thing I found such a difference when you know I used to study wearing just joggers and like old t-shirts or whatever and messy hair and whatever to like now when I sort of put in a little bit of effort in the mornings it's made such a difference with productivity with just confidence and everything 
Yeah, I've actually spoke about this on my TikTok and some people might think it's extra, but when I go out into town, into um, running errands and stuff like that, I will really dress up. I will wear heels, I will wear skirts, dresses. And the thing is like, it's a sad truth about human psychology, but it is what it is. When you look better, you get treated better yeah, and true. you feel more confident. Um, you're showing to the world that you care about yourself. And I think taking that time to step out, always looking your best. I mean, so I work at Reese, the fashion store part time. Oh, nice. Do you know? Yeah. 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 Um, and I got the job because I walked in there and I was dressed up in my heels and a dress oh, and they said they had part time work. So you never ever know what opportunities you're going to get from showing the world that you care about yourself. And I think mm -hmm. I've noticed British society is going a lot more like American where you look around and people don't really care about how they look. People are just kind of shoving on whatever and going out however. So you're at even more of an advantage now if you show the world that you care about how mm. you appear because not many people are if you think about That's like my thing. grandparents generation my grandma still now she does not leave the house without any lipstick or anything oh, because that generation had so much more pride in how they looked how they carried themselves mm. i think we're losing that a little bit in this 100 percent, exactly what you said like when you do put that effort in you are going to stand out and like men are going to be like oh my god women don't really dress like this anymore mm. whatever it is did you see that video i forgot what her name is but um she sort of wore old money aesthetic so she was literally just wearing a black bodycon dress, heels, a Chanel bag and like a hat. And she was just walking through the street and you could see how different and how amazingly she stood out. It wasn't even just her clothes, just the way she was walking and everything and everybody else was so dressed down. I was like, we've lost the whole you know, yes. effort into how you look. I say to my friends, I'm like, go outside and look at the colours that people are wearing. Now, don't get me wrong. I do sometimes wear black and things like that. But when you look around everyone is in grey, black and denim jeans. Yeah. That's it. You don't see any beautiful colours, vibrant outfits. It's really rare to see that. 100%. You know, the heels thing, I was, I've was i always wanted to do it. That's the one thing I'm like, oh my God, nobody wears heels. Like, I'm really worried about it. I mean, I don't know if it's like I need to perfect my walk or whatever it is, but I love that you do. I respect it so much. Yeah, I love no, it. I always, always, always wear my heels when I'm not at work walking around. Yeah, just How practice. How tall are you? Practice. I am five five, so okay, about five so seven. When I've got my heels. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. yeah. oh God, amazing! I love that. Yeah, I need to yeah. practice my walk. Yeah, just keep wearing them and practice, practice, practice. But do it as an experiment. Start wearing your heels. Start wearing the skirts, the dresses and see how differently you get treated and you feel better about yourself. So true. Oh yeah, with the colour thing, I have found such a difference when I've worn brighter colours compared to black. Mm -hmm. Like I always used to wear black and mm -hmm. my dad always used to be like, he was like, you're young, like wear colour, like yeah. you know, colours are a reflection of happiness and stuff like that. And I'd be like, dad, what like, and then I found a difference when I wear white and lighter colours, oh my God, I feel so much more pretty i feel so much more confident mm. because you don't see that like you said every single day yeah and i think as a woman for me personally and maybe feminists will have my head off for this i don't know but <laughs> i think that's part of the high value woman mindset where as a woman you do take care of yourself mm. and you bring that feminine energy through how you look through the pretty colors through being ladylike, through the cute dresses i personally for me i think that's really important as a woman and yeah 100 but it makes you feel more feminine it puts you in touch yeah. with the feminine energy i saw Definitely. another um tiktok video a while ago and it was a girl who's basically like how i stay in my feminine energy while being in a nine to five so feminine energy is about free flowing right so you're not in a rush yeah. so mm. make sure you go to bed and wake up at the same time every day so that's the first thing so make sure you're waking up slowly or doing pilates or whatever it is you want to do second of all put effort into your appearance so you know lay out your clothes the night before like take time in the morning to like look good and all that stuff and the third thing is once you leave the office back into feminine because at work you yeah, have to be in your masculine yeah. quite a lot don't you mm, yeah I've really struggled with that because especially with teaching your instructing delivering mm. talking giving orders and telling kids what to do and I actually really struggled with that where I'd go into school and I would feel like I was in my masculine energy and I didn't I knew that isn't who I wanted to be. And I think that is another reason why I wanted to leave because I didn't feel like me. Mm. So I, I get exactly the point that she's saying there because it is the nine to five and the work like that. It is so, it is very masculine. Yeah. I mean, I was Which nothing say, wrong like, with that. No, no, yeah. But for us, we want to be more feminine. Don't yeah, we? yeah. Yeah. 100%. I think femininity sometimes looked down upon. Like it's a beautiful thing. I've never felt so 
happy, safe, secure, at peace in my life since stepping into my femininity. And it's only been like five months. Yeah, I think once you truly start to understand how powerful your feminine energy is, the way you speak, how you interact with people, the way you move, the way you look. Like I was going to do a TikTok about this. So I went into town yesterday. I was all dressed up and I noticed like, and this is the power of feminine energy. Men were just smiling at me. As soon as they saw me, they had this biggest grin on their face. And I'm not talking about the validation. I'm talking about once just you being in your essence as a mm. woman can have such an impact. People are just grinning at you because it's coming from inside you, how it makes people feel, the way you carry yourself and the way you look, etc. Yeah. It's so it's so powerful. The whole how you treat yourself is how other people will treat you is so true. I can Honest. see such a difference from when I just didn't respect myself. Like I've always said that I loved myself, right, growing up. Like you know, I had self-esteem issues like everybody does and whatever. So I worked on myself and I used to think, you know, it's just about accepting who you are on the outside, talking nice to yourself, that sort of thing. But having boundaries is such an important thing. And people could see that I was like, but why is everybody, you know, I love myself. Why don't people respect that or whatever? Mm. It's because I don't have the boundaries. So mm. Obviously, people are going to walk all over you because, you know, you just haven't put any boundaries up and you know you're putting up with whatever and then what happens is in the end ultimately you'll build up resentment towards that person because one day you're fed up and if I'm honest I always used to be like I'm such a nice person I used to think it was like such a compliment but it's not mm. if I'm honest with you yeah. being nice and kind comes from setting boundaries because you're being the most authentic version of yourself mm. you're not being 100%. do you know what I mean I used to be like no but that's not nice that's why I do that I'm like no that is nice that is more kind because you're being yeah. straight up because you, you're not going to explode yeah. one day. It's, gonna, it's more healthy. Yeah, and you're not messing anybody around no. because from the get-go, you're stating your... Yeah, that was... So from the age of 25 to 26, I'd say that year, that was my biggest inner work. And I always remembered that quote, people feel how you feel about yourself. Mm. And I would get disrespected at work. People would talk rudely to me. And once I realised that I was changing my energy upon people walking in the room. And the biggest realization I had was, no, I walk into a room and I feel my inner self. I feel my inner energy and I respect myself through my energy by dominating my own energy. The, the disrespect stopped like that. And I it was a, such a big realization for me that you don't change to the energy in the room. You bring your own energy into the room. The room changes to you. I love that so much. There's a really good YouTube. I, I can't take credit for it. I, I used to watch his channel so much. Watch, what's his name? And he's got blonde hair and he's got like 1.2 million followers. Oh, I have to let you know, but I am <laughs> crediting someone. His name's, oh, I can't remember. Aaron, Aaron. Aaron or something. Um, mm. He really, really talks about that, the um, inner energy and dominating your own energy and the internal validation that you give yourself. I really learned that so much from him. I love that. That's something I'm going to work on then. Because yeah. if I'm stepping into a room and, you know, whether someone's had an argument or there's some sort of tension going on, I feed off of that so much. Whereas yeah. I think I need to sort of picture a bubble around me and just realise, you know, nothing that's can get what, in. Sorry, just reminded me what I was yeah. going to say. That's what he calls it. He calls it your frame. We all have a frame and you have to stay in your own frame by controlling your energy, standing tall, standing proud, feeling your body because that's how you do it you feel into your body rather than becoming anxious because you're picking up on everybody else's energies what's the step to first I, step to work on that meditate so you can feel your body oh my god yes yeah do you meditate yeah you know i started yes. it i think it was just after christmas i was like asking me when yeah. you use resolution i have been slacking for about two weeks yeah and i yeah. think i've sort of noticed these or whatever coming back but it was just it's just been the best thing that's ever happened. I am so yeah. in control of emotions. I'm so in control of just my energy and my peace. Like I prioritize my peace now. That's the number one yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. When did you start meditating? When I was in Spain. So when I was 22. Oh, now, oh, don't yes, get me wrong. I've, it's ebbs and flows. I've fallen off. However, it's I meditate morning and night, 10 minutes, and it just oh. keeps me so grounded. And it allows you to feel your inner energy and that's one way I would say to do it if you if you meditate you feel your own body so then when you're out there in the world you can bring your energy back to your own body because oh you do it 
I think I want to move on to fitness and nutrition because mm-hmm. this is something I think, I mean, I think everybody has their sort of like little weakness. I don't know. So mine has always been sugar and mm-hmm. I've always had quite a like high metabolism. I'm very energetic. I'm always moving around. I love working out, all that sort of stuff. That's my one thing, especially when it comes to leading up to my period. Because I don't know if many people know yeah, this. Yeah, we yeah. don't get taught about this in school. We have four phases of our cycle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there are and some really phases. crave sugar oh, don't you, the day before. Me too. The day before, too. always. Like... So I wanted to ask you about discipline with food and nutrition. What made you discipline? Like, I know you said about how your why. What about with food? I've always, as long as I can remember, I feel like it might have been my past life or something. I've always been fascinated with like health. And once I started to do the research, like buying books about actually the vitamins and minerals you need and what they do to your body, started learning about how bad this food is for us. It's the causes of cancer and things like that slowly I put myself off it now don't get me wrong like for example I had my period and I got through a whole packet of digestives the other day the chocolate Mm -hmm. ones I do still have weaknesses but once I realized and and I did my research on how bad the food is for you kind of it put me off it in a way Mm -hmm. and then it's just habit building so when I'm out if the food's from a packet I just don't eat it so I have to meal prep because it Mm -hmm. isn't food that's natural or from God. So if it's not natural and it's in a packet, I just don't eat it. And once you have that rule, it just becomes your identity. No, I love that. I've heard about this. Yeah. I've had loads of, t- like, I think our TikTok for you page is probably similar because we're in, into yeah. the similar sort of stuff. But yeah, there was a lot of stuff where it's like, if it's in a packet, don't get it because they've stuffed it with chemicals or whatever it is. If it's usually, you know, by itself on a rack, then that's absolutely fine. But well you know it's better than in a packet but yeah 100 percent. i just think yeah i think um what's helped me as well and you might have seen i did a video about this and maybe i didn't deliver it the best way because that's what the lady said but if we do care about our appearance as women the best way to have a good appearance is through health yeah. and i think i see lots of women that are doing no shade but lots of procedures you can see they've had lows done to their face but then they're overweight from eating too much or you can see that they're not looking after themselves properly and you know that they're just eating junk food all the time and I realized that the best way for me to have the clear skin the have a healthy body the nice hair was through getting expensive vitamins and minerals mm. and doing looking after my health from the inside and so that's also helped me with cutting out junk food because I'm like you're not going to help me look good got you that was I think that was a TikTok video of a girl and she was just like every sort of decision I make now is like is it going to make me hot or is it going to make me rich and if the answer is no I'm not going to do it yeah and I was just like oh my god so I was there the other day and I was just I was like I wanted like extra biscuits or whatever I was just like is it going to make me hot no Put it away. That's such a good idea. So good. So good. Love that. You mentioned feminism a while ago. What's your opinion? Mm, I think that it's actually put women in a worse situation in the sense as, don't get me wrong, I think things needed to change. And I look at my grandma and my granddad, and I know all our relationships weren't like that, but how he used to speak down to her, she wasn't allowed friends. She, you know, she wasn't allowed to go out and it was she never answered back. And don't, I think in that sense, things needed to change in the relationships between men and women. But when I see women at school that are teachers that are like seven months pregnant and they've got the stress of teaching and they're going 50-50 and to know that they're going 50-50 and carrying a baby, I just feel like... And then doing all the housework as well. Oppression. Exactly. It's actually more oppression. And I think we need men like I have a, I've tried to focus on having a really strong network of men, not even men that I'm intimately involved with, but knowing that if I, something's happened to my car or something's broken or they can find me someone to help fix something or they can do something for me. We need men so much that I think that's, you know, that's my opinion there. I personally, I'm not going to get into a relationship that's 50, 50. I wouldn't do that. No, 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 no. No way. No. Oh my gosh. The yeah. the pregnancy thing really upsets me. Me too. I, I, my friend, uh, one of my best friends, she does medicine. And she was telling me how, you know, on one of her placements, like she was helping deliver babies and doing C-section, stuff like that. Some of the doctors were pregnant doing that. The stress Mad. that that puts on your body and that goes exactly. into your child. And I think what, so I'm quite, um, I'm quite strong minded on the fact that I would not have a child without being married because that's what happened in my, 
yeah, so my mother was essentially a baby mama and I just looked at that and I just, I would never do that. And I think what's helped me realize is, is the honor that you give to a man. And this is actually, I learned this from the universe guru. Have you seen yes, her? Yes, I, I love her. Oh my her. gosh. I love I have her. Done so much inner work from her. Oh, amazing. And she really made me realize this, like, the greatest honor that you could give a man is I will choose your DNA and carry your baby for nine months. My body will change everything that I will go through. And you're going to do that for a man that won't even marry you and you've known for seven months. Like, no, it's the greatest honor you can give as a woman. Mm -hmm. So that's, I also, that's what I think about, you know, the women working whilst they're pregnant and stuff like that. It's just, yeah. It's really sad. It's so mm. sad. Like the stress and all that stuff. But yeah. When you said about how you agree with some bits of feminism, but not the sort of the modern day, I think what I've realized is I believe in the first wave of feminism. Yes. Yeah. Me but too. not the modern. Me too. Yeah. Exact same. We needed the first wave and things needed to change. However, the modern feminism, I think, is. And this is another reason why I made my TikTok page. And this is slightly changing conversation, but. In the Western culture, I see so many young women idolize sexual attraction from men. Mm -hmm. They think that the way to get a man is through sexual attraction only. Like how many young girls Instagram I go on and it's bikini pictures, thirst trap kind of pictures. Like it's becoming so, so common. And I think it's really, really sad that women now think that the only way they add value to a man's life is by being sexually attractive. And I noticed this trend with so many young women and I think it's really, really sad. And that's another thing that I want to teach young women. Like you are respected by a man so much more when you show your beauty and show slight sexiness. However, in a with respect, dignity, mm -hmm. you have your hobbies, you have your goals, you speak multiple languages. There's so many things about you as a woman that are, you know, your career and things you do like that. You can have both, but yeah, that's another thing that I think no. feminine, I don't know if it is feminism saying, you know, my body, my choice, I can do what I want, but I think that's quite disastrous for young women as well because I see it at school. I see year sevens like twerking to like Cardi B and things like that. And they've got this idea, you know, in Cardi B's that I don't cook, I don't clean. Young girls really think that it's just about being sexualized and things like that. And I really don't like that in the Western culture. Do you know what else it is? What, what really upsets me about that as well? I feel like men have become so immune to that as well like mm. immune to the female body and what I love about us women is that we can get a man you know weak with our bodies and you know sexual energy and that sort of stuff and now it's just become so like they're immune to it so now if I were to yeah. you know get naked for my man or whatever he sees that all the time so what's the point yes do you know yes, what I mean yes, yes. so I feel 100%. like in a way they might think it's an empowering but it's actually taken the power away from us Loki, a hundred percent. Do you know what but I mean? You know what I've realised. You know what I've realised on my journey, and this is another point where I talk about we're at an advantage if you're a feminine woman and you don't see many colours and things like that, and how people take care of themselves. There are lots of men who are desperate for a woman that is like that, conducts herself in a proper way, but is also beautiful, elegant, classy, sexy. Because not many women are doing that. When you are like that, you stand that as you stand I out. See. And I'll, that's the DMs I get. I'll be honest. And deep men DM me like, "Oh wow, you're a proper woman. You you carry yourself so well." I started a new teaching job, and one of the men said to me, "You're so elegant." As soon as I saw you, I knew you were elegant. So I think that how you we're at an advantage because so many women are behaving like that, and men are craving that from women. It puts us in an advantage. <laughs> no, I like that mindset. You've completely shifted yeah. what I just thought. I like that. Definitely. So no, you go. Sorry, go. Carry on. No, you, you go. No. Go. So I was just going to say, actually, be proud of being that woman because they're becoming more scarce. Mm -hmm. So your value is increasing because there are not many women that are conducting themselves with class, with elegance, with dignity, etc. Do you know what's crazy? Is like when. I sort of started to be a bit more classy and elegant, all that sort of stuff. My confidence went up. It's just an energy shift. It's yeah, a huge 100%. energy shift. Do you know who Anna Bay is? Anna Bay. Oh, yeah, you're like elegant. Yeah. Yeah. She's, yeah. she's great. And you know what I really like as well is I think we see a lot of these women um, that have leveled up and we only see the end result. And there's oh, a few yeah. women I've seen, like I really love, and I actually want to do a video because what I used to look like compared to now, I think it helps when people see 
the level up journey because they just see the end result and think, oh, I can't get to that. But I love with Anna Bay. Did you see her videos where she showed when she was smoking, drinking, overweight, what she used to look like? And I think that transparency is so important for this community oh, because it makes us realize, no, I can do this. And we do change and change is OK. There oh, was an 100%. old version like we were talking about with the shame. We mm -hmm. think that we see these leveled up people and that's how they've always been. But they haven't. No, that I love that. Like that was just a luck thing because that was on a TV show, and so that yeah, was recorded. Yeah. Oh my god, that was amazing! How and it just it made me feel a lot better. I'm not gonna lie because it just showed. Like I remember when that video came out. I've been following her for a while, and that video came out. All of her followers, all of us, we were shocked. We we're like, was that really you? Yeah, but it instilled yeah. a confidence because we're like, oh my god, I, I can change as well. Yeah, it's amazing. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Oh amazing. Yeah. The next thing I want to talk about is relationships and dating relationships mm. meaning friendships the girls you have around you like people you surround yourself with and how important that is and how much that affects your life especially on your yeah. level up journey yeah I think so I went through a period where I felt isolated from some of my friends back home because I realized that I was developing growing and I felt different so I cut a few people off and then I had about two years where I had no friends and because I live in a city a different city from where I'm originally from right and we had COVID and things like that and I was so, I remember I was so lonely every week and I had nothing to do however I just whether it was meant to happen because of the inner work I was doing I've now got three or four friends that have the exact same values as me all we talk about is leveling up being better women and I think it's so important. And my heart goes for those girls that don't have that yet. But, but I, that was me. I didn't have that. However, I think you might have seen I did a TikTok about it. So what I would do is you can go on dates easy if you're in a city with no friends. You just download Hinge. And I would get taken to like the expensive, fancy, nice restaurants. I and I would go into too. the toilets and I would speak to the girls and we'd swap Instagrams. And that's how I met two of my 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 friends now because I would be in I got taken to a VIP club area and you. there was another girl there I know there was another girl <laughs> there and that was it but this comes from you looking after yourself as a mm. woman and looking your best and presenting yourself your best and keeping your body in shape how you get through the door to places like that and some people find that this conversation is superficial but I think it's really important as a woman if you want to level up yeah if you want people in the, with the same mindset as you you put yourself in those situations and you know areas yeah. and whatever it is I don't know I'm a big believer in the universe as well so a couple episodes ago I had uh, my friend Priya on I actually discovered her through TikTok and we had that podcast episode we have been we connected I think early January I reached out to her we have been messaging every single day and we are exactly the same mindset we're all about leveling up we give each other positive encouragement every single day constructive criticism it's just been so beautiful and I think you know how I said earlier about how I feed off of energy so much when I talk to her my energy, I just feel amazing. I just feel so great. So you're so right about having, you know, the right people around you and everything. It's so, so, so important. If you've got friends that you know throw you shade from back home or from your oldest friends, you know aren't really there for you like that, you know are slightly are jealous of you, those are the ones to cut off. Because I do think, so I've got some friends from back home where when we were younger, we were at best, best friends. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, we've grown older and we have different likes and dislikes. Mm. Um, we like doing different things. They don't like doing what I do. However, I would never, ever get rid of them because that that original bond will always be there, even if we grow and develop through life. Mm. So I think those friends, don't get rid of those because you will always have that bond, even if you grow and change. However, what I did is those friends that the energy didn't feel right I knew that they were they would say sly comments they were I, I got rid I said I'm sorry I left the group chat I said I'm sorry I can't be friends with you anymore remove them off Instagram and I did feel lonely and I did isolate myself from the group but looking back that paralleled me forward that pushed and you me had forward, peace sorry. you had peace mm. when when my friends have good news I genuinely cry tears about, yes. I, my heart feels full I'm so happy for them so I'm like I want that reciprocated do you know what I, I was going to make a TikTok about this saying, if you have one friend who wants your success and believes in you as much as you do and can see even bigger things for you and believes in their soul that you can go far, 
that's the kind of friend you want. Yeah. And I've got that with one girlfriend and it's priceless. I wouldn't change it for the world. And I always, I say to her, I'm like, I want to level up so I can help you level up and take oh, us 100%, places. Yeah. We're on this journey together. If I, I make that. money, I want it to be your money. I want to take you on holiday and I want to, don't get me wrong, I want to find a relationship and build a relationship. Oh, Chris, However, I'm crying. Well, oh, oh. No, it's so beautiful. Honestly, yeah. I feel exactly the same. Exactly the same. It's so special. Money cannot buy it. Cannot oh, no. buy it. 100%. So if you find that, hold, and if you're that woman, you will find that because it's reciprocal. You can give that and you can receive that. And you because you are giving that to your friends, you will get that back. Yeah, it's like an attraction thing, isn't it? What you yeah. what energy you give out, you will attract that. Which is even with Priya, we say this all the time. We're like, we're on such a similar journey. And both mm. of us, you know, we were sort of, I mean, ever since finishing uni early September, I've been spending 99% of my time alone in my room, reading, leveling up, watching different videos, working my podcast, whatever it is. So now also what's happened with the friendship aspect is I'm very picky with who I spend my time with mm -hmm. because I value my peace so much. And like you, yeah. I, I don't know if you were an extrovert, but I was very like talkative as well growing up up was such yeah. an extrovert yeah. yeah always felt the need to be around people but now working on myself and being by myself I value my peace so much I value who I spend my time with and I think it's been such an amazing thing so yes it's been lonely or whatever but now I feel so fulfilled being by myself the one thing I do need to do more is take myself on solo dates as well that's yeah. very very yeah, important you, yeah get dressed up and take yourself on a solo date 100%. I used to do that yeah that's amazing so with relationships what can you tell me about dating and who you sort of you know want as a man in your life and knowing when to walk away as well is so 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 important yeah it's hard so, but once you've got that mm, you know you have to. you have to I think that was my biggest realization like I never saw my mum walk away from awful relationships so I realized that I had internalized that and I didn't know how to walk away. And mm -hmm. I stayed in some one relationship from 22 to 25, 26 for too long because I didn't know how to walk away. So now, now I truly understand the power of walking away. Even if I'm hurt, I feel that emotion and I cut because mm -hmm. it's kind of, it's strange, but this is, I made a video about it yesterday. You only become a real one to a man if you walk away. That's it. The only way a man looks at you and thinks you're a real one, he respects you, is if you walk away and never look back. 100%. And I really, really had to learn that. And I think as a woman, you don't realise that that's another feminine superpower that you have. Oh, yeah. Being that woman that walks away, cuts. So I will cut at the first sign of disrespect. Like recently, I, I went on a date with an accountant and he was really nice. We got on well. And then I was out with my girlfriend and I saw him this is after our first date, hmm. I saw him checking out my girlfriend's bun. Right. And I, the thing is, I was there and I thought about it. And I just said to him, I said, no, I said, you, you checked out my friend. That was disrespectful. I was there in front of you. And I realized um, when you start to learn to cut off the little tiny things, because you've practiced it, you can then do it when it gets to the serious situations. Um, and that's what's really helped me. And I also have an abundance mindset with men. I think you've got to think there's another one. There'll be another one coming. Mm. I'll find another day. I'll have mm. another day. And so it, it's funny how it works because actually once I started cutting more people off after one or two dates, if they disrespected me, I've then got more and more dates lined up. So it does work like that because you 100%. are stating your boundaries. Also, I think with the whole, I think a lot of women, sometimes they get a bit worried to be straight up on first dates because they're just mm -hmm. like, oh no, I'm going to push him away. But actually mm -hmm. what you're doing is, yeah, you're pushing him away, but you're you're pushing him out and leading to the one that you want. So it's a good Definitely. thing. You should, you should exactly. actually be grateful that he's been straight up as well and you know he's not looking for the same thing or whatever and he's not wasted your time you should be grateful for that 100 percent. answering your question about what i'm looking for i actually learned this from the universe guru and i feel really strongly about it now did you I see know what you're gonna say the the rotational gap? Date. oh yeah I saw yeah this. i do rotational dating i do that yeah. but i the age gap I, i'm really I, I completely get where she's coming from mm. and i only try to because I don't know why I think the universe is testing me recently all men close to my age 27 28 are trying to date me but um I will go for it she says seven to ten years doesn't she yeah. so mid 30s and up mm. I have gone over I have gone on dates over the 10 years but I think I completely <laughs> get it makes sense the age gap makes sense so I'm looking for a man who's seven to ten years or five years older than me mid 30s um 
and wants to start get married and have a family and yeah. things like that and, also and has for, to provide oh yeah for sure for people who don't know as well with the universe career the reason why she says seven to ten years above is because obviously you've got the mental age we mature fast or whatever yeah, yeah but also it's because i don't know about you i think you're the same you want a man who's better than you financially physically he's been through more life experience whatever it is so that's why she says the age gap thing so she's like you know if it's a seven i think it's seven years she says minimum right where yeah, she says seven, but her yeah. husband says four. Her husband okay, says four or five years, yeah. but she thinks seven. But yeah, sorry, carry on. No, no, yeah. So she literally, that's the thing, because she was like, they've got their finances more in check, whatever it is. That's why she says a bit above. Yeah. Yeah. Going back to what you said before about... um the boundaries thing and leaving at the first disrespect and how they see you as, you know, wifey material or a real one or whatever. It's because you respect your boundaries. What I found in previous relationships or whatever, I'll be like, this is a boundary. I don't like this. If they do it again and I'm still staying, they're not going to take me seriously. Exactly. That's what happened to me. Like, do you know what I mean? That's why walking away and letting go is the only way you get taken seriously. Oh, 100%. So it's, it's, it's funny. It's like a, the way it works. Yeah, it's funny the way it works, but that's the only way you can be seen as a real one. If he sensed that you will walk away, mm. and I really, I actually learned this from, so I was going to make a TikTok about this. One female role model, because I don't think there's many out there that I mm. have, is Sabrina Elba. Have you seen her married to Idris Elba? Oh, yeah. She's stunning. So, such stunning beautiful but I've actually what I love about her is um and I'm not massive into celebrity culture I'm not but I do think we need more women young Mm. women do and to look at and inspire them and she does that the way she carries herself she's sexy but modest she has class she delivers speeches and talks there's Mm. so much about her and I heard this on a podcast and it's always stuck with me so obviously Idris Elba is the most sought after man in the world (laughs) every woman wants him he has beautiful women all around him he could get whoever he wants and they were doing one of those like talks for Vogue or something where they asked each other questions about you know what annoys you Mm. asked each other questions about how well they know each other and one question was what annoys Idris the most about Sabrina? And they both started scribbling away. They knew the answer right away. And they both wrote the same thing immediately. And it was Sabrina walks away from arguments. And the way this podcaster analyzed it was she basically said, Sabrina is willing to walk away from the most sought after handsome man in the world. And that's what makes him love her because she will walk away from him. And that's always stuck with me. Every time they go to argue, she goes, no, I'm not doing it. And she walks away. She doesn't get angry with him. I I know. So good. But don't you think that comes from both? That comes from her being, you know, confident in herself. But I think that also comes from him because, you know, he doesn't, she doesn't sort of think, actually, no, it comes from her. Because I was going to say, yes. um, he probably, you know, he's made her feel like, you know, it's only her. He's not looking at other women or whatever. But she respects herself more than if, you know, like you said, the most whatever man walks away or whatever. I don't know. I love that. I, yeah, I think it's definitely her. Because if you think about the amount of women that would never walk away from him because oh, yeah. it's Idris Elba. Or the so lifestyle she's willing, or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, exactly. So she's willing to know that she will walk away. Oh God, even if it's Idris Elba I love I know. that so 100%. good do you know who Sadia Psychology is I feel like you'd love her yes yes I watch she's her great. yeah she's great yeah she's good she's, she's really amazing. she's in Dubai isn't she yeah what I love about yeah. her as well is she's got such a balanced view on males and females I know. Yeah. Like she's not pro like on one side or the other like she's not red-pilled and she's not like an extreme modern feminist she's like in the middle and she treats everyone I love that yeah so this is the thing that like um is annoyed like I get frustrated with and what I want to use my platform for even more is we need to bring each other together and these platforms aren't doing that people are arguing and I've actually been invited to a podcast in London and they talk about relationships and stuff and they've got quite a few subscribers and I've really taken my time to think about if I'm going to go because I don't want to go and it gets polarized what I'm Mm. saying I want to I want to help bring men and women together so we have more traditional families we need this this baby mama baby father culture needs to stop like i've seen in schools firsthand the 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 damage that it's doing the kids with the biggest difficulties failing in school getting into addictions are always from the single parent households and i think 
that's why I really want to help like, bring people together, men and women. And that's my issue with these. If you've seen pearly things and things like that, yeah. it's just creating more disharmony Hatred. between us. It's not constructive. Mm. Sadia Psychology spoke about that, how these podcasts aren't bringing us together. No, yeah. She was like, we need, I think she was on a Just Pearly Things podcast and she was saying, if we're constantly, you know, if the Red Bull are constantly bashing women and if the fe- like the extreme feminists are constantly bashing men, we're never going to get anywhere. We have to exactly. sort of l- learn when to take accountability on both sides and when to sort of appreciate, I think appreciation's also been lost or whatever because I think yeah. that's so important in a relationship as well like yeah know your roles know what you bring or whatever it is on both sides and what you know you're doing in the relationship but also appreciate the other person men need to feel appreciated women need to feel appreciated and that makes it feel more like love rather than like a business I was going to talk a bit about this on my TikTok as well I used to have an issue with speaking disrespectfully I'll be very vulnerable mm. and honest I did mm. I didn't have a father around my mother didn't know how to speak to men and I can hold my hands up and say probably my last partner found that difficult because I didn't know. But once I, it was like a click, like a switch. Once I realized that all a man wants is you to be nice to him, hold your tongue, be peaceful, be in your feminine energy. It's easy. You win. It's so easy. Like I would never, ever act out or anything like that anymore because Once you understand that they just want respect, don't get me wrong, I think, and I was going to give this advice to young women. In the Western culture, people get together for love. And I think what happens is, and I'm trying to say this in the best way, because people get together for love, women just go off attraction and that chemistry. And then in a few months time, they realize that they don't respect this man because of what he's built, how hard has he worked? Is he sitting around playing video games all day? Because they're not looking at his resources, which is how we're biologically wired as women. They, In the last 200 years, we started to get together for love. And mm-hmm. I think what I found is I was picking men that I looked at, I felt the chemistry instantly, but then I looked at their life and I was like, hold on, you're however many years older than me. You've had this many more years on the planet and this is what you've built. I can't Mm. respect you. So I think another key element as a woman is ensuring that you're with a man and that's where the age gap gap helps that you can respect Mm. because it's very, very difficult to hold your tongue and try and not get moody and be peaceful when you look at him and you're like, is this is all you, is this what you've got? Mm. Because it's not, we are biologically wired like that and it's okay for us to feel like that. And I think women are falling into this trap where, they get with someone for chemistry, not thinking about his resources, etc. Hundred percent. I talked about this in a couple episodes ago. It's oh, very really? important to mm. pick your partner based on the same values rather than mm. interests as well and hobbies. You can mm-hmm. like you can have chemistry with anyone. You can have balance exactly. with anyone. Yeah. But what's going to stick in the long run is your values, where mm-hmm. you want to like where you want to live, the sort of roles you want in a house, if you want to get married or not, if you want children or not. That's what's important. 100% it's so definitely true. yeah and also going back to the whole respect thing I on it, I completely agree with the whole you want to be his peace you want to be his positive energy I can't imagine being a man being stressed at work whatever it is at business whatever he's doing coming home to not peace he's not going to exactly. want to come back exactly you know what I mean? 100% yeah. it's so important to create that peace that positive loving yeah. environment if you've got an argument hold it for later on whatever it is but it's so, yeah, so, yeah. so important I think even the way that even your tone, if you have a difficult oh, conversation, yeah. you don't raise your voice, you speak softly, you listen, you don't interrupt, you remain in your feminine energy so that this man knows that when he even has to have a difficult conversation with you, it isn't going to be drama. He feels safe to talk to you. 100%. I think also with communication, it's so important not to get personal. So that's one thing I'd mm. say I'm really proud of. But the other thing that like other stuff is whatever, I've got weaknesses. But one thing is, Whenever I'm communicating with someone, it's never, I would never get personal. Mm-hmm. And so I can't tolerate that with me. I'm just like, why don't we just stick to, you know, just being straight up? And I think also just being straight up as well. And like you said, the tone is so important because men can sense definitely. that tone. They can sense when you're yeah. being a bit bitchy or whatever it is. Yeah, so yeah, true. definitely. And it makes you not want to engage in the conversation. Yeah, 100%. I want to ask you, who is a high value man in your eyes? Like whether it's a famous person that everybody sort of knows, who do you think is a great role model for men? Because I've got one. I was talking about this with my friend the other day. Oh, um, oh, that's a good question. In the public eye right now, I'm not so sure. I definitely look at my, I call him my dad, but who my mum remarried married and had finally a beautiful relationship Aww. with. 
he works so hard. He's there for his family. He, he's always there for us. He's always calm. He's rational. And I just look at a man like that and I just think you're, you, we are so, he leveled up my family. He yeah. brought us up. And that's the power of a man that I truly realized. He leveled us up. 100%. Just his finances, his mental health. That's one role model that I look at and I'm like, you are a great role model for men. Who do you think? I'm intrigued. I mean, I was just going to really add on to what you said. That's so beautiful because what also what happens in that is if you've got a great man, like the man that your mum remarried, what he's going to provide your mum, she's going to multiply it. That's the power of the feminine. So if yes. he buys her, you know, a house, she's going to create a lovely home. If you buys her a meal she's gonna I mean uh, buys her groceries she's gonna cook a beautiful meal that's like the power of femininity and because he's brought that amazingness with your mum's femininity or whatever it's brought you guys all up and that's so beautiful I'm so happy for you that's yeah I honestly learned so much because before my before my mum met this man she would be irrational and it's having a good man in your life, she completely changed. She learned how to control her tongue. She learned how to respect. She walks away. And I think it's the power from having a decent man, how it can just change you as a woman. I really understood, like, talking about the feminism earlier on, we yeah. need men. If 100%. you think you don't need a man, it's ridiculous. 100%. But yeah, sorry. So who's your role model? I mean, this is quite an extreme when it comes to, like, I'm not talking about the money aspect too much, but I'm, I'm, I'm said messy. And the reason I think Lionel yes. Messi, oh, <laughs> oh no, with Lionel Messi, yes, okay, he's got, you know, great money, whatever it is. He's really good at his game. He's disciplined. He's, I think discipline is the most attractive trait in a man. Uh, yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. Whether that's with his finances, his health, his goals, his fitness, um, sexually disciplined is really important mm. as well. But with him, the reason why I say he's a high value man is because wherever he is his wife is by his side if he's at a party yes. he's right there he's such a family man when he won the world cup in december the first thing he did was call his wife down got her to hold the trophy and just take a photo because he oh. knew that having her by his side has fueled that energy within him with it to work hard to you yeah. know grab his goals and that sort of stuff that's why i always think that and he's so loyal I've, as well he never yeah. ever touches a woman anyway like when posing for photo you've seen that like see, did you see that the meat yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's just so goes like that and doesn't look at her yeah 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 uh, you know what i've thought that about Messi before actually you're right yeah. i completely agree he treats like a queen he's given her beautiful children and she's she she's always happy and that's mm. come from both like both of them have given each other oh it's just beautiful or even when she can't make a game the first thing he does is he facetimes her on the pitch oh like it's beautiful like he knows that, that so they're sweet. a team and mm -hmm. they're just so strong absolutely love them absolutely love That's them gorgeous yeah last thing is educating yeah. yourself so you mm. mentioned a couple of books you've mentioned languages leveling up like that so what are sort of the some of the stuff that you've been doing or are doing because like you said it's always like a work in progress to sort of level up and work on your inner work and all that sort of stuff yeah I think I saw someone speak about this I can't I can't remember who on TikTok but women are kind of being told with you know all this feminist talk and feminist talk and stuff when a man says he doesn't want your money and he doesn't want you to lead with your accomplishments it doesn't mean he doesn't want a woman that just sits at home and has no aspirations that's not what it means like a man loves a woman who is like intelligent, has mm. can have intelligent conversations, has so many things about her. So like for me, that's what I've been really proud of. Like I have a history degree. I lived in Spain, so I started to learn Spanish. Like I am, I like to keep up to date with reading. So I read lots and lots of self-improvement books. I read, um, I like to keep up to date with that. Obviously I'm really disciplined with the gym. I also have other hobbies and things that I like to do. So I think it's just about making sure that you're a woman that can have those intelligent conversations mm. and there's something more about you than just looks yeah I think also you know there's that whole thing about becoming a dream girl so like mm. you have to be a dream girl for yourself first I think Michelle Diaz yeah. talks about this you'll love her as well. I'll send you loads yeah of I like her yeah yeah, yeah like oh her. you know her she's great so she's always like you know become the dream girl first because then you're so fulfilled by yourself and you know you've got your hobbies and everything that you love that you will attract what you want and you're also going to be very picky that way as well which is also really yeah good for you. definitely so, definitely so, so important 100 what are your top three book recommendations oh um so the first ever one that got me thinking about self-work when I was 22 was The Road Less Travelled. Have you ever heard of it? No, I haven't. It's one of the most famous, it was out from the 1980s. It was one of the most famous 
self-help books from the 1980s, but how it made me think about my childhood, it made me emotional. So The Road Less Travelled by Scott Peck. Um, then the books about spirituality and science by, I always get his name wrong. I want to say it's David Hawkins. Um, have you heard of Map of Consciousness, Power Versus Force? Oh, yes, I think where, I have. Yeah, yeah, where he looks at, he tests, scientifically tests the vibration of emotions. Oh, wow. So to become your emotional state is scientifically proven to change your life. So you have to change your life from the inside through being high vibration. It's scientifically proven mm. that. And then, um, oh, good question. I think that's what I can say right now. Yeah, those those ones. Okay. What about you? I mean, I'm just finished. I mean, Atomic Habits has been great for building discipline yeah. and that sort of stuff. I've actually, okay, this is really embarrassing, but I had never read a book since I was five years old, like I probably read The Gruffalo last or something like mm -hmm. that. So on my level up journey, I have literally ordered, I think I've got about 15 books that I need to read on my bookshelf. So it's all of Robert Greene's books, like you mentioned, yeah. 48 Laws of Power. Um, Atomic Habits has been great. I just bought another book by Dr. David Schwartz called The Magic of Thinking Big. So that's, yes, I've seen that. I'm so yeah. excited for that one. Um, yeah, so many like Why Men Love Bitches. I also bought um, Steve I've got Harvey's that one too. book. Is that, that's such yeah. a good book. I've got Steve it? Harvey's book. That's so good. Well, at like a lady like a man yes yeah oh, i'm yeah. so excited to read it i'm so excited yeah, read that but it's yeah good. oh my god i'm excited but yeah that, that's been like something i've been so looking forward to every day is just like getting into bed reading my book like it's just so peaceful mm -hmm. and i've already like also when you said earlier about the whole walking away from relationships or like working your passions and reading books you have this self-esteem you're just it just shoots Ex up because exactly. like you said you've got stuff about you you've got knowledge you've got you've worked on yourself, whatever it is, it just builds your confidence so much. So people think confidence is just about the outside. It's not. No, it's, it's not. not. And I think that's why I, I talk about dating and self-esteem on my page, because I realise there's no point dating. Like dating and self-esteem are actually very, very linked. Mm. Like they, they're intertwined more than we realise. There's no point you dating if you don't feel like you're working on yourself to get rid of those insecurities and hab and negative habits because they're just going to show up in your dating life. You'll oh. attract men that you don't, you know, you attract men that think, I bet you, you don't think you're good enough for, you attract men that aren't the best for you. So dating and self-esteem are so intertwined. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Oh I'm God. really sorry. I've got work. So I'm no, yeah, of gonna, course, I want to keep talking. Can. No, no, of course, of course you can. I'd love to like meet up with you one day, honestly. Yes, we can have some dinner living? or something. I'm right near you. not far from me. Where are you? Okay, we're not too far. No. Yeah, it's about okay. an hour and a half away. I can okay. drive down to you and we can oh, go out for dinner. You. Yeah, we'll do that. That's so great. Yeah, oh 100% God, we'll sort it out. Yeah, we'll sort it out. Thank you so much. I Thank already so feel much. like my vibration has oh, and risen from this chat. Amazing. Like, You've oh. motivated me so much. I feel so oh. happy now. You know, I woke up today feeling a little bit, I don't know, a bit low or whatever. I think it's probably the food I ate yesterday. You're so right about the food. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just, I feel so great. I feel so motivated. Yeah, me Thank too. you so much. I'm, I'm so glad we've connected. I know, me too. Like, me too. And also, we will meet up. 100%. And also with your page as well, just, I just want to personally say thank you so much for what you're oh. doing. You're changing lives every day. You help me oh. within the space of a week. So oh. thank you so, so, so much. And yeah, wish you a beautiful day. And thank you so much for your time. Yes, you too. We will. Okay, I think Mia's iPhone just died, but I just want to say thank you so, so, so much to Mia for your time, for sharing your story. I already feel so motivated. I think she has such a beautiful energy and aura. You can see how powerful she is, you know, reconnecting with her feminine energy and working on herself and all that discipline that she's built over the years it's so 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 inspiring i feel so grateful that you know you came on here to share your story because i think it will help so many people knowing that if somebody else has gone through some sort of struggle and they've come out the other side and as you can see with mia her presence you know the things that she's achieved and accomplished in life is just so 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 inspiring so thank you so 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 much for tuning in it means so much i don't thank you guys enough it really really means everything i really really hope you enjoyed and i will see you in the next episode bye